I'm going to give you a quick uh, overview of the Shortel mobile call router. It's a product that uh, Shortel has acquired and is rapidly integrating into the Shortel um, product line functionally as well as look and feel. We've got an early version here. Um, still says it GITO, but let's not worry about that. When you log into the administrative portal, um, you'll be brought to the monitor section and you'll notice that there is a configuration section, a system monitoring capability, a maintenance section, and a troubleshooting section, all of which uh, I have found to be very usable, uh, much the way that um, Shortel uh, has used web administration in the past. Your links will be over on the left side and um, your workspace will be in the center. Generally, you'll start with the configuration and the configuration includes a section on system configuration, clustering, unified communications, mobility, voice policies, groups, and users. So uh, normally, uh, um, I'll, I'll save you some grief here by telling you you need to start with the licensing section because if you don't have licenses, um, you're not going to go very far. It, it doesn't have the 45-day grace period that uh, Shortel usually provides uh, in ECC 7 and in all of the Shortel PBXs. Go ahead and get that set up. Add your licenses. You're going to need licenses for end users um, for secure voice. Um, don't forget your SIP trunk licenses as well. Setting the date and time, absolutely critical. Uh, set this for manual. Go ahead and put the date and time in and then go select a uh, FTP, excuse me, a NTP server and enable it. Uh, time's got to be right. It should um, be real close to the correct time and uh, this will be influential in debugging as well as file writing and interacting with the host PBX. Certificates, once again, get these certificates installed before you uh, even try to make use of the system. Uh, the certification of devices and the website is um, a very secure environment within the Shortel router. So you will need to either purchase a, an authority or the facility does exist for you to generate one, but you will need to generate one for both your inside interface and your outside interface. Generally, you'll move on to networking. Networking, go ahead and give this guy a name. And then we're going to take a look at the interfaces. There are two interfaces generally on the router. Uh, Ethernet 0 is the interface that you will use um, to, to interconnect with your local area network and uh, your enterprise uh, Wi-Fi uh, connectivity. And, and that'll all happen through the Ethernet 0 interface. So go ahead and get uh, the correct IP address for that. Uh, generally, it's going to be a static IP address at your gateway, your speeds, all the normal networking stuff. The, the key takeaway here, it'll save you some grief. Ethernet 1 is generally going to be assigned to the public IP on your firewall that port forwards, port uh, the SSL port uh, to the mobility router, and that's going to be done on a private IP address. The takeaway here is these two interfaces cannot be on the same subnet. So in this case, I've got my Ethernet 0 and a 192 net and my Ethernet here on the um, 10 net. So that's absolutely uh, necessary. Your remote access setup, 
um, again, remote access interface is going to be Ethernet 1. It's enabled. Uh, if we had a fully qualified domain name for it, we'd put it here. I'm not currently using one, but uh, I am natting a public IP address to port 443. Uh, both UDP and TCP need to be set up. Um, your tunnel interfaces, protocols, um, call admission control uh, to be used for determining how much of the bandwidth we're going to allocate for voice calls. So make sure you've got uh, licensing, time and date set up, get your certif certifications installed and available. Those things aren't done. You're not going anywhere. On the subject of networking, uh, get your interfaces defined. Make sure you have your internal and external and understand the difference. Your, this is where you're pointing to with your browser to do system administration. This is where you're pointing to uh, to bring in an SSL uh, connection from a handset a Roam Anywhere client on an iPhone down at Starbucks is setting up an SSL connection to this public uh, IP address, which is port forwarded um, into the router. So uh, typically then uh, you'll take a look at setting up your PBX. Um, I've set up a Shortel um, PBX. You can uh, use this system on a variety of other PBXs, and it may surprise you that you can have more than one PBX. This router will support more than one PBX. Uh, you're going to set up the um, address of the PBX. You're going to know how your SIP trunks are set up. This is not a tutorial on any of that. I have some other tutorials on SIP and SIP trunking. Again, the goal here is just to give you an overview of how to set up the router in quick time. Uh, you, you're going to define a numbering plan. Uh, that shouldn't uh, um, surprise anybody. And uh, there's some, some options that you'll need to work through. You'll need some access numbers. Uh, there's a concept of a handover number, a, a an access number and a cellular handover number. So voice over IP number, and cellular handover number. So uh, these require you to have three separate um, DID numbers. So just get them, get them ready. You're going to need them. You're going to need a cellular access number for uh, cellular data call setup. Um, if you're not on Wi-Fi and a Roam Anywhere client wants to talk to the router, it will then try a cellular data connect connection. It's going to call this number. Uh, or you'll need a, you'll need a, a DID number for your reverse dial, and also if you're going to hand the call off between uh, the two networks. So um, groups and users. Go ahead and set up groups. These uh, might be geographically. It, it, it's just like every group declaration. It's a way of uh, handling a particular container of uh, uh, users and applying uh, rules and, and policies against those users. Your users, you will actually go ahead and set them up. Uh, um, they, Add functionality is pretty straightforward. Pick the group you want to put them in, give them a user ID, uh, indicate if they have local, in uh, which case, you know, your SIP registration password needs to go in, and so on. Uh, you'll just um, go ahead and um, establish the line side uh, authentication for the PBX side. Uh, set up the mobile device in terms of its number, uh, what carrier it is, uh, G3, GSM, CDMA, yada, yada. Um, 
and you'll have some other options that you can play with here. The system um, is very um, demanding in terms of the configuration's got to be right. Um, once you've done it once or twice, it's actually pretty straightforward. Fine-tuning it and making it uh, a useful addition to your corporate telecom network is going to take a little time, but there are some great monitoring tools here. There are some great uh, maintenance tools, troubleshooting, being able to turn on, uh, let's say, packet capture for a, 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 you know, a particular uh, area that you're, you're looking at. Perhaps you want to take a look at, um, oh, let's say, your, your SIP registration process. Um, that's uh, absolutely vital that you be able to see that in text format, and the system has uh, quite a bit of maintenance and troubleshooting uh, um, capabilities. So again, uh, the goal here is just to give you a quick snapshot for those of you who have never seen uh, the Mobility Router. It's actually a very exciting um, product. It enables you to use a iPhone, for example, as your Shortel extension and take it with you on the road, Starbucks, uh, into a foreign country, roam around the campus, and still have full Shortel connectivity and functionality. So I hope you have found this informative, and I thank you for...